Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Introduction to Unity. In today's episode we will talk about the Unity camera, what is it used for inside the Unity Editor, and how do we change its settings. Let's go! As usual, I've got an empty scene here set up with some forest environment and you will notice that I've got an, a warning message in here that says Display 1 has no camera rendering. So in every game that you play, there is a camera. And the camera works as your eyes inside the game. If you're playing a first person shooter, it will be literally the face of the player. While if you're playing a third person controller, it will be the camera over the shoulder. In strategy games, it will be the hovering camera, etc. So all these stuff, they represent the camera. To create a camera in Unity, all you have to do is right click in the hierarchy and click camera or simply clicking the plus camera or you can go ahead and choose the game object and choose the camera. It, all the way, it will create a camera in the object for you. And as you can see, the camera object has, as we know, the game object, transform, and the camera. There's an audio listener here, which we'll discuss in a different episode, but our main concern is the camera component. Let's go ahead and set up the camera to look in a nice way. So I will rotate this 180 degrees and bring it in forward and slightly downwards. That should be fine. And let's increase the view size in here. So as you can see, this is my camera. It sees this view on the right side. Let's go through the components of the camera one by one in some detail. First of all, we've got the clear flags. So what is a clear flag? Clear flag is what should the camera render beyond your objects. As you can see, we've got our whole forest in here set up, but right at the horizon, there's some sort of like a sky, which is exactly what we have set up in here. So it has four options. The first one is a skybox, and you can access it by going to Window, Rendering, Lighting, and go into Environment. And this is the skybox that we have right now. It's literally a, a default skybox of Unity. You can change it later on, but this is not our uh, concern in this episode. So the next one is Solid Color, which exactly what it says. And to change the solid color, we look at the beneath feature we have is background and background is basically a, a color tool so you can choose any color you want and it will display in the background of your game the next two are slightly similar so depth is it clears the depth of the camera but leaves the last color rendered while don't clear it just leaves both the depth and the last color rendered so this is if you don't want to have anything in the background so we'll bring it back to skybox let's bring this down to default and that's all about the clear flags. Culling mask is a, a command that you can tell the camera what layer to display on the screen or render on the screen. And at the moment, it has set to everything. So what means it display all the layers, which could be useful in simple game, but in, in different games, you would want it to display certain layers and hide others. If I go ahead and change it to nothing, it will let you just hide everything so let's go ahead and choose default only and because everything is set to default by default it will display everything but going into the view here you'll notice that this rock in here is really not visible why it's because I've already preset this before to a different layer as you can see if I chose the log it has the layer of default the floor default well, where the, the rock itself it has a transparent FX you can have as much layer as you want so having the set to transparent FX takes it out of the range of the layers that the camera should render that's why it's not visible in here so if I change this one and add a transparent layer FX you will see it set up in here if I remove it it will be gone and otherwise if I change it to default it will display the object itself so this is all about the culling mask the next bit is something quite important in the camera is what mode do you want to use? The camera has two projection modes. It has a perspective mode and orthographic mode. And depending on the way that your game is set up, if it's a 3D game, if it's a 2D game, that's when you decide on which projection mode you want to use. Usually in a 3D game's projection mode is set up to perspective because in 3D mode you will be dealing with the, you know, with the X and Y and the Z. So you would need a depth factor in it and perspective is exactly what gives it for you and as you can see on the left side the the camera has this kind of like a, like a frustrum 
kind of shape where you you look things in a perspective way and if I bring this log back and forth you would notice visually that it, it is actually coming back and forth and uh, the other mode is orthographic so orthographic will set it to the X and Y only so you will have the feel of a 2D only and having that said you will see that in here things look slightly uh, different because that's how I was perceived in a 2D environment and if I select for example this tree and I've decided to move it in a global sc scale back and forth you will realize that this tree doesn't really give you the illusion that's coming back and forth in the camera view it's because it doesn't really render the depth I mean you would see the effect in terms of light and, and whatever but it doesn't really give you the Z buffer uh, feature in it so this is useful for the um, 2D games and now let's see what are the features for each mode so in the perspective mode you'll find these settings the field of view axis the field of view value and the physical camera the field of view axis is what is the axis of the field view of your camera and the next one is field of view is basically how much degrees should the camera render according to that axis and to understand this a bit more if I go ahead and increase this value you will see that the camera starts to look backwards as if like you have the 0.5 mode on your camera on a mobile but if you lower it it will seem like it's it's zooming in so this is useful for the for the perspective modes in, more, mostly in, in first person games so let's bring it back as normal the next one is physical camera and this one I'm not gonna discuss it too much so it has a lot of features that can be similar to the DSLR cameras so if you're a fan of these bits you can enable it and play around with it it will give you a lot of options in it and I'll leave a link in the description for that in orthographic we've, uh, we've got only one setting which is the size and since it's only X and Y there's not too much settings in it all you have to all you can do is decrease or increase the uh, viewport of the uh, camera so as you can see this is my shape of what the camera is rendering and to have a better view at the moment all you have to do is click on this word here perspective and it will change it to isometric and then you can change also the the view angle so I will change it to look in the Z axis so that will give you somehow like a viewport of how the camera is seeing stuff so this is our view, camera view bit we can change it by modifying the size so if I decrease the size it will decrease the size of the viewport and it will look like as we were zooming technically we're just increasing the viewport and you can change it as well as in here in the view by drag and dropping one of these dots so this is uh, all about the orthographic camera the next bit is the clipping planes clipping planes is where the camera should start looking at stuff in its near viewport and its last viewport and you might have seen this in a lot of games where in the graphic settings it says the render is near medium or far or even sometimes it has a value so let's remove this a bit here you will see that there's a line in here set up there so that's that this describes how far should the camera look and how close should it look and how close is displayed in front of the camera it's this small bit in here and looking at the inspector you will have two settings the near and the far and you might have some games where you want to render things way too close to the camera or not so this will in this way you will need to remove slightly more values and make it smaller and you'll see this one is coming closer to the camera so these values as from the camera forward on so let's give it back to 0.3 and let's see how will this react if I start reducing this viewport let's say I put a 500 we still see things but if I start reducing it more we will slightly see in a bit that things start to be cut out in the distance as you can see right now the, the mountain is gone it's, it's getting you know eating slightly so that's fine because this is what I'm telling the camera only render 50 units away from the camera 40 30 so this is useful for um, some games where you would have like a visual effect after 50 units and then 
you don't really have to see after 50 units so uh, you don't have to set this to 80 or 90 or 100 so you could just set it to 60 and then that's it you will have some, some sort of fog or there's a wall or anything else so this is really useful for uh, performance sake play with it wisely the next bit is the viewport rect so the viewport rect is not really related to the 3d models inside the screen or whatever is inside your game it's only related with what the camera has to display on your screen in front of you so before we discuss these values in here i want to talk about the viewport of the screen as you can see in front of us disregarding anything inside we've got our own screen which is basically a flat plane that displays things of the camera's viewport and each screen, each viewport has two axes the horizontal and the vertical and it's got two values it starts from zero and ends in one and the zero is always on the bottom left for the exit axis and uh, the x x axis starts from zero in here and ends to one while the y which is the horizontal it starts from zero at the bottom and ends on the top left one so if i say i want zero zero it's basically bottom left if i say one one it's top right if i say 0 0.5 0 0.5 it's the middle if i say 0 0.5 zero will be in the bottom the middle and etc so let's go back to the camera and now we'll know a bit more about what those things mean so the viewport rect is what the camera should show on your screen and at the moment it's set to zero zero which is bottom left bottom left so and the width is one and height is one and that means fill the whole screen in width and height so that's why you see your content on the screen it's really useful to use this when you deal with uh, cameras or at least view views inside the views like you're looking at a uh, you have a, a camera on your screen that you're looking at something but you're playing and also it's very useful when you work when you're playing with uh, let's say four people at the same place like a, a couch local game so if I go ahead and change this to 0.5 it will start displaying from the middle of the x-axis forward on and I change it to 0.5 it will have it set to the in the middle middle and then it goes up and right so this is quite useful for some cases as I said and most of the cases you might not use it but it's a useful tool to have in the camera a depth what is a depth I mean we know what the depth is but in this case the depth is a priority indicator of the camera and at the moment it's set to zero and the higher depth is that camera will have a higher priority to render on the screen and we will see this in action is by creating a new camera and name it camera 2 and the same our old one camera 1 and what I want to do is I want to rotate the camera 2 to the back and then you will see here that well, well I have a different view here which is fine because my first camera is looking forward but my second camera looks backwards and they both have the same depth but what Unity does is the last camera that we created has the higher uh, priority when they're in the, in the same value so if I change my camera to give it like 10 that's exactly what's happening camera camera 2 has a higher depth so always display it but if I change my camera 1 to 20 this will always display my first camera so this is really useful in, in some cases you want to use it and that's depth for you the next elements I will group them up in several ones because they're related to the graphics settings and I'm not gonna go in details into graphics settings. I'm just gonna display these some of the features in you know briefly the first one is the rendering path so rendering path is one of the things you have in your graphics settings where you can change the uh, how the path of the rendering path changes in your screen so you've got forward deferred and legacy vertex and the next one is our collision calling and this is how the camera hides the objects that's not rendered in front of you let's say something behind the wall the camera just stops from no, stops rendering it just to save some performance and it's really useful the next one is high dynamic range and it's a feature that enables you to uh, make lights look more realistic and uh, also it's it, it's using using graphic settings the msaa is the multi sampling analyzing it's a fe it's a nice feature to be honest where the camera will perceive the object's edges slightly softer than how they are instead of having them too edgy for example this one you see how 
this thing looks slightly edgy but when you increase the value of this one and change its settings it will look smoother just make it look nicer and the last one is allow dynamic resolution it's basically just enabling and disabling the dynamic resolution of the graphics settings all these stuff uh, I'll put them in the description below if you want to do, uh, read more about them so let's go to the next one target texture a target texture is technically a channel of what do you want to do with the camera view or with the camera render so if it's set to none it will always display on your screen and uh, as you can see here it has a non render texture so what is a render texture a render texture is an object that you can create by simply right clicking anywhere in your project folders and choosing a render texture so this render texture is acts as the texture itself but it changes every frame what that makes it like a movie right so a movie like a camera so it acts like a camera in a sense I've ha I have a texture a test render texture in here set up it, it's got settings but again it's not my concern at the moment the te render texture so if I remove my old camera and then have this one set here so as soon as I drag the render texture and put it inside the camera itself you'll see that the display render it just becomes disabled which is fine because what I told her is everything is rendering in the camera put it inside the render texture and you will see what that means by clicking on the render texture and you will see the actual viewport is right here right now and to prove that if I choose this log and hide it click this again you will see it's hidden in here so that helps and one of the ways that you can use this is for example you've got the game where you're controlling a drone right so and you're holding like a tablet or something and the drone is flying and inside the tablet you've got this small screen with clicks buttons inside of it but there's a viewport where you can see what the drone is seeing and this is one of the ways that you can utilize the camera of the drone to display it on that texture in front of you and I have a test bit in here that I've created is a render panel and render panel is basically a quad a frame quad with an actual quad inside of it and what I've done is I've used I've created a material and set the value of the material to the render texture in here in the albedo and then assigned it to the quad itself so it, what it does it assigns it to the mesh but not our concern at the moment what we need to see at the moment here is how the viewport is getting enabled or used and as you can see if I play the game and this is where our camera is looking at the moment it's looking like this in this viewport and it's displayed in our quad in here so if I choose this tree and then move it you will see it move and we, can, we can even see the screen in here so it's like a small inception so and uh, I mean personally I've used it uh, multiple times it's very good so uh, this is how you can use the render texture last but not least is the target display what a target display means is you tell the camera to render itself on a specific display and what what display means is your screens your monitors so at the moment I have two monitors but if at the house and your home if you have one monitor it will be mainly set to display one if you got more it will set incrementally display two three four five and six and eight so at the moment I'm telling it display it on display one and if I tell it show it on display two it will instantly tell me all oh, display one has no render cameras which is fine because the camera only shows on display two and how you can look at the different displays is by changing this value here by choosing display one on display two let's have another example where I have multiple cameras on multiple displays so camera 2 has a display 2 where camera 1 will have display 1 so let's rotate camera 2 to the back and if I go ahead and switch between different displays that's where I can see which camera looks where let's say I have two, two screens two monitors and then each monitor will look at a different display that's good and amazing so this is where we reach at the end of this episode and we've discovered all the editor uh, settings of the camera uh, there will be a different episode for how we deal with the camera in terms of script well that's all for today i hope you enjoyed it and learned something if you did hit the like and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one bye bye